So I wanted to return to discuss a little bit more about this research article here um, about corticostriatal synaptic defects and OCD-like behaviors in SAPAP3 mutant mice. In general, with every research article, the f um, there are four questions you should ask actually about really every experiment. Many research articles like this one will have multiple experiments. And for these, as we're getting started, we'll kind of walk through them together, and then throughout the course of the semester, we'll continue to um, work through these with a little bit less input from me and a little bit more time for you to work through them on your own. So first of all, you're only responsible for the parts of the papers that we discuss in class or that I explicitly assign for homework. The first experiment that we will be discussing in class is this one here. The first part of figure one, just parts A through D. Um, and really, uh, part A and B and a little bit in C kind of encapsulate everything that you are going to be expected to know. So the question that they are asking is, how does mutating this gene called SAPAP3, removing it from the animal's genome, so making mice that have no working copies of this gene, affect the animal's behavior? And um, so when, so that's their first question, is what, did they, uh, is what are they asking? They're asking, how does removing this gene affect the animal's behavior? Our second question, then, is um, what did they do? So what they did is they made mice that lacked the gene. So that's called their experimental manipulation. The third question that we want to know is what did they measure? So the measurement in this case is grooming time. Um, they're just letting the mice go and watching with a video camera and seeing how much time they spend grooming during different four hour periods across the day. Um, either the number of times they groom or the percent of the time that they spend grooming. Um, and they also observed, I guess, the consequences of this grooming in terms of pulling off their hair. The, so, so their measurement is how much grooming. Um, the next question, our fourth question, is what did they observe? So the observation, the result, is that the mutant mice spend more time grooming than the control or wild type mice, or the ones that have working at least one working copy of this gene. Then the fifth and final question is what do they conclude? And so their conclusion is that these mutant mice exhibit excessive grooming and therefore OCD-like symptoms or OCD-like behaviors. So notice, they did not directly observe OCD-like behaviors. They made an observation specifically of grooming, something that is quantifiable or measurable. And then the result is not more OCD behaviors. The result is more grooming. The conclusion is that this is OCD-like behavior. The second thing that they did is again is to ask does this behavior respond to fluoxetin also known as Prozac um, once again we're just looking at um, a part of figure two in this case panel A and B um, again we're um, uh, actually mostly just looking at A which is the amount of time grooming over a six hour period now they have in a sense sort of two manipulations because they've got wild type mice with no, with vehicle, that is just a control sort of salt solution, um, uh, and then uh, wild type mice with fluoxetine, and then knockout mice with the control solution or with the medication with fluoxetine. So that is their manipulation, is with or without fluoxetine, and especially we're interested in the knockout mice with or without fluoxetine. So that's their manipulation. The measurement is how many times they groom over a six hour period. And then the um, result is that fluoxetine or Prozac decreases 
the amount of time spent grooming. And so their conclusion is that fluoxetine improves the OCD behaviors. Again, they don't directly observe that fluoxetine removes OCD or OCD-like behaviors. They directly observe what they measured. They directly observe that fluoxetine decreases grooming. They conclude and infer from this that fluoxetine improves the OCD-like behaviors. So here, we're back to our original manipulation, which is comparing wild type and mice that lack this. The question is, what's going on in the synapses? The measurement now is synaptic strength, field excitatory postsynaptic potential. So we're measuring the postsynaptic response when we stimulate the axons from the cortex. And we're measuring postsynaptic response in the receiving cells, the postsynaptic receiving cells in the striatum. So our measurement is synaptic strength or synaptic responses in the striatum. Our observation, first of all in panel B, is that for a single stimulation, we see a decreased postsynaptic response. Um, and then, so from that, we can conclude that the synapses are weaker. We don't actually observe weaker synapses, we observe decreased synaptic response, and then we conclude, infer, that the synapses are weaker. The second measurement, it, uh, the second manipulation is to do two electrical simulations rather than a single electrical simulation, again comparing wild type versus knockout. And then in this case, um, with the two stimulations as their manipulation, and then the measurement of not just the size of the response, but the um, ratio of the two responses. So are they similar in size? Are they different? In this case, they're typically the second pulse is twice as big as the first. The second response is twice as big as the first. But that difference is the same in wild type versus knockout. And so, um, and so the observation is that there is no difference in the um, in the ratio of responses, in, in the response to the first versus response to the second, in either, in either um, type of animal. That's their observation. The conclusion from that is something that we'll discuss in class, but it relates back to some of the synaptic properties in Lambert-Eaton syndrome versus myasthenia gravis.